just a moment. We're, uh, we ran a little bit long in our last session, so we're just getting everything set up. Um, are you able to close off that? Thank you. Welcome. We're going to be uh, starting here in just a couple seconds. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Brandon Arrington. I am a graduate assistant here at Baylor University in the Office of Spiritual Life, uh, working with Missions Week, and uh, we're going to be talking about missions as a career today. Uh, so uh, I was just wondering if we could have some of our guests introduce themselves um, and share a little bit about what you're doing real quick, and then, uh, and then we'll get into some questions. Uh, so I'll just open up the floor to whoever wants to start us off. Hi, I'm Susan Cowley. I'm the executive. Oh, Dom, I don't have audio. Mm -hmm. oh, now do you have audio? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I have audio, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'm Susan Cowley, executive director in Waco, Texas of Talitha Coombe Institute. We are a brain development program for trauma affected children that runs every day, all day, birth to five, at least weekdays. And um, I'm here because I never intended to have a career in nonprofit world. And I'll tell you a little about that later. Well, I'm Deanna okay. Burke. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Deanna. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So I work with One More Child. I'm the director of global operations and we are based out of Lakeland, Florida. Um, but have over 35 global ministry sites in 13 different countries, working with vulnerable children and families and helping to provide the tangible goods and resources that they need to be successful. Okay. Um, my name is Steve Vinton. I'm the um, president of Village Schools International. I live in a small village um, in Tanzania we work with people in villages to build schools. We have 51 schools and second, uh, secondary schools and villages throughout Tanzania, Malawi, Zambia, and Uganda. And we, we have short-term missionaries who come for a year or two, and then some of them become long-term missionaries, um, spending their lives living in small villages and teaching kids and sharing the gospel with them. Hi, I'm Brianna. I'm with Children's Relief International. We work um, with those living in deep poverty in seven different countries around the world. Um, we have international partners in each of those countries and each of our projects um, that we 
help make their vision come to life um, in their community um, by providing resources in the gospel. In those I'm Herschel, I'm with SIM USA. We're in over 70 countries around the world. We've been around since 1893 and we have third generation missionaries out there right now. So we have many families um, that have done missions as a career for a long time. We're in over 70 countries around the world and we'd love to help you connect your passions to God's calling. Hey, my name is Abby Brockelman. I'm with Chris Starr, and we're a church planting organization focused on least reached Buddhist, Hindus, and Muslims. Um, so we have workers in over 30 countries, and um, many of them um, are doing missions as a career. And so, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this topic. I'm Kristen Walker, and I was a summer intern with Urban Promise in Wilmington, Delaware as a junior in college, and it completely changed my life. I ended up spending eight years there, and then uh, five years ago, God called me to move back home to North Little Rock to start an Urban Promise here, and so definitely grateful for God's call in my life, and um, yeah, I'd love to share more about how we can experience him through missions as a career. Okay, I, I'm not totally sure if we got everyone. Hopefully we did. Um, but my first question for you guys is, what is one piece of advice that you would give to uh, students or, or people looking to get into missions as a career or, or as a life? What's one piece of advice? I would say do an internship get experience, go on a short trip, or um, take some time to, to see if that's something that you want to do on a very shorter uh, experience. We've had interns who serve with us overseas and interns who serve with us here in the States in our headquarters office, and we've had some that are like, yeah, this is so great. This is what I want to do with my life. And we've had others that unfortunately have figured out this is not what God has called me to. And so doing something for a shorter period of time rather than committing your whole education or your whole experience to uh, the life you've intended and figuring out that you hate it um, is not something that we would recommend. So get some experience and try it out first. And just to feed off that, Deanna, if you're not serving now in your local church or local community, start serving because you're not going to become a super missionary when you move. Um, figure out if you like it where you are. And then, yeah, connect on it, whether it's a short term or a vision trip and see what it is. Uh, we, my family and I were called to missions and called to Nigeria without ever having been out of the country or without ever having been in Nigeria and without ever having been ever on a mission trip. But we knew it was God's call and it worked well. So it's okay to do it that way, but that's rare. Usually you want to see where you're serving. And we were serving in so many different places at that point. So make sure you're serving currently in a ministry that's going to be what you're working in. And, and see what the mission organization is like where you're going. I would say um, be really open to God surprising you. You're a student, you're getting a degree in something, you have a thought about what that might be. My degree was in professional writing. I've been a professional writer all my life. I've served in at least four industries, but I was not looking for God to call me into a nonprofit. This is actually a nonprofit I helped to found 20 years ago, never intended to work for them. Needed an ED, they kept saying, but you are the ED, you write the grants, you give the tours, you speak for us, you are the ED. And I kept saying, no, 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 I'm not, no, I'm not. Well, the truth is finally they asked the right question. What are you resisting? And within five minutes, I was the ED and have been for five years. So be open to God calling you a little differently than you have in mind right this minute. I would even add to that, that if you feel like the Lord may be leading, leading you to ministry or missions um, or nonprofit work and your major doesn't necessarily line up directly with that, don't rush to go change your major. Um, if the Lord's gifted you in some way, um, we can even in nonprofit worlds, we can use you. We have graphic designers, we have um, writers, storytellers on our staff. Um, 
that um, social media um, people. So um, yeah, just because, and I was a missions major. So just because you're a missions major or you feel like the Lord's leading you to missions, that doesn't mean that he can't use um, your other giftings or your other education um, for his glory. Um, I really would agree with what Brianna said, and I'd like to build on that. I think God uses all of the things, not only that we study, but also the things that we're interested in, um, your your hobbies, the things that that God has put in your life um, and given you joy in doing. And as long as you can then find um, a place where God would desire you to do that, it might be here in the States, but if you're thinking in terms of missions overseas, I would also strongly recommend not necessarily the the short-term missions trip where you're going, what you would call a vision trip where you're going for a short time, a week or two weeks or something like that. But look at something that might be for a semester or you're doing for the whole summer or you're going even for a year before you make this big leap and say, I'm going to be a full-time career missionary um, with an organization. The idea of living with people and being involved in work I think is is the best advice that I could give somebody. Did we get everyone? Oh, I would just say going back to what Herschel said to really, um, if if that's any kind of idea of yours to be involved in missions, is to talk to your church and um, ask them uh, for advice. Ask them for um, ways to be involved in missions here and um, what the church is doing worldwide and really um, dig into your church before you ever consider um, going going overseas. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, going into our next question, what's a what's the challenge that you guys are facing in your mission field right now, uh, whether that's due to uh, the COVID situation, or, or maybe just something that that you're always challenging with, or challenged by. <laughs> I think something that's going to be talked about, I think, tomorrow, but uh, support raising is a real um, thing, and if that, if you're um, looking into doing missions, um, a lot of organizations require you to raise support. Um, but here at CRI, we, all of our staff raises support to be on staff. And so um, even in COVID-19 and in a pandemic, as someone who raised support myself, like, well, I'll just be transparent and say it has been difficult. Um, and so, um, yeah, if you, I would even say, yeah, continue to build community even in this time and, um, um, keep those connections because support raising and uh, ministry and having a strong community is very important for this work. I think probably a current challenge for our workers right now is just um, issues with visas. Part of, a lot of that has to do with COVID and um, uh, some of it doesn't have to do with COVID, but um, that's always something that we're trying to figure out when, when can we get visas, how long can we get them for, how long can we stay in country. I think that's really changed the way we do short term for now because really pretty much any country you go to right now requires you to go two weeks. And so there's no, I, I was supposed to go to Central Asia this summer, that surely did not work out. Um, and there's a lot of trips that all our summer trips got canceled. So we'll see what it looks like in the future. Support raising is always, Rihanna said it, it's one of the biggest negatives that people look at when you say, oh, I want to be a missionary, but I don't want to support raise. Well, if God's calling you to missions. He's calling you to raise support. And he's also, he's got the money for you. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he also owns a thousand hills. So it's all his. Read Nehemiah, read the, old, read the New Testament and God provides again and again. And be encouraged because if God's calling you, he's going to provide. Yeah, it's a great word. And just thinking too, like what Brianna said about just relationships and developing community. I think that's been the hardest struggle for our in-country partners and the families that we work with is they're used to receiving short-term missionaries and um, 
travelers who are going to come and encourage them in the word and and support them in the work that they're doing and so not having that as a result of not being able to send short-term missionaries has been a real challenge we've had to get creative in our services and how we are communicating with our team members on the ground so i mean praise god that we have technology but i'm not sure you know how how equivalent that is to actually being in person and making those tangible connections I think the biggest challenge for us is finding enough people to serve in the places where we have opportunities. And I, I think having been involved in missions now for almost uh, 35 years myself, I'm um, seeing that the number of the number of people who felt a calling to go and serve overseas uh, 25, 30 years ago was significantly more than the number of people who feel that calling today. And yet the opportunities are still there and the things that God has called us to do are great and huge. And um, when I look at challenges in the work that we're doing, um, I think the biggest challenge is, is getting people here in colleges in the States to really believe that God could use them now and in, in the context that we have in today's world. And so um, finding those people and getting word out that the, the opportunities to serve are there, I think that's the biggest challenge in missions right now. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I definitely agree. I think for us across the board, the last few years has just been difficult um, having enough summer interns and then year-long interns and then hiring full-time staff, just finding the right fit with the right part, um, people that really get the mission and vision of what we're doing and are willing to basically pour out their lives for the sake of the gospel. And um, a lot of, we hire high school students from our neighborhood and they, they're like the main mentors for our kids, but they need mentors. And so finding people that are gonna disciple them and walk alongside of them. Um, the mission field is in our own backyard in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, so, finding those people that are going to disciple our students and young people that then will be multiplied. Um, so yeah, I agree. But same thing. I mean, we know we're not the only ones that getting the word out and finding those people that God's moving on their hearts um, so that the eyes of their hearts can be enlightened to the hope of the calling that they've received to have the inheritance and the riches of God's glory. So all that good stuff. Thank you. Did, did we get everyone there? Okay. Well, we got a, um, about six minutes left. Uh, so lastly, I'd just like to hear from each one of you, um, what is a good resource for students to look into uh, if they're wanting to dive deeper into missions? And then as well, uh, how can our student volunteers get involved with your own organization? So uh, how can they best get in contact with you? Okay, well, I'll jump in. I would, I would really recommend to everybody that they check out the perspectives course that's offered by the U.S. Center for World Missions out in California. Um, it's, it's harder than any course you'll ever take, um, <laughs> um, but it's, it's offered all around the United States. I'm sure that it's offered there in Mueco also. Um, it's, you end up with 15 different speakers um, it's a great course and it'll help you to understand and have a great foundation for missions, whether you're a missions major or you're not, and in particular if you're not. And I would really, that would be my first recommendation to everybody to try and um, sign up and, and, um, and take that course. And as far as working with us, uh, if, if you just want to go to our website, villageschools.org, uh, and check out opportunities that are there. We, we certainly need people who will go overseas and live in a small village and teach kids. That's what we are all about. Um, but there are really a tremendous number of opportunities for serving right here in the States, um, even while you're still doing your studying and to um, partner with teachers that we have who are in Africa. So if you just go to our website and find out uh, how to contact us, um, we can definitely plug you into work right now. Um, another resource that I would recommend 
I love perspectives. Uh, perspectives is why I am where I am today, doing what I am doing today. Um, a, a briefer study that is um, really good is something called the Explore Study. Um, and the, the X, it, the EX is actually just an X. Um, I'll, and I can put a link in the chat to that. Um, but that's a um, seven week study that um, gives a brief, like basically what Perspectives does, but just a briefer form of it. Um, so that's something you could do um, just yourself with a few friends um, to keep learning um, and to understand more about the, the needs around the world and about God's heart for the world. Um, so, um, and Christar.org is, is our website. And um, if you go to our website, there's a form that you can fill out that's just got, got just basically your, your contact info. And myself or one of our other mobilizers would follow up with you. Um, that's called the Get Started form. And I can put that in the chat as well. And I have put our Talitha Kum information in the chat, but our website also has a form and Baylor students are using it currently. Uh, for local things, I would encourage you to visit with student engagement. Um, there are many places at Baylor that will help you find a place to serve that is specific to your own interest. So I'd encourage you to do that. For sure, and seek godly counsel. I mean, surround yourself with people who have been in your shoes or have served as a missionary in some capacity, whether it be local or international, and, and seek their advice and counsel on the decision that you're about to make. And, and like I said earlier, just get some kind of an experience, get your toes wet while you can. And um, we at One More Child have internships anywhere from six weeks up to 12 weeks, depending on what you're looking for. And we'd love to have you come and serve with us either in Florida or remotely or overseas and, and get your toes wet. Yeah, I think, I think finding a mentor and finding someone that can pour into your life that you can be real with, that can talk to you, whether it's about missions, about your walk with the Lord, where you need to improve, which way you might want to go, and people that can pray alongside you, people that can speak into your life and you're allowed to speak truth. Um, if you know any missionaries, if not, um, Steve put his information in there, I'll put mine. I mean, I'm happy to talk to anyone. It doesn't just about missions. There's a lot of great orgs that are on this call right now. So it's, it's not just about SIM. It's not just about Steve's org. It's not just about Chris Star. It's about God. And, and that's how we all look at it is we want to glorify him and bring people to know him. That's what we're here for. So anyway, we can help you and encourage you. Uh, just lean in, read your Bible, spend time in prayer, find mentors and people that will be honest with you. And if you know a missionary, talk to them or talk to us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the college and internship mobilizer at CRI. So um, yeah, I put my information out, but it's Brianna at childrensrelief.org. Um, we would love to connect you with opportunities to serve on a short-term team with us or for an internship. We just had um, actually a Baylor student join us and she's a marketing student um, at Baylor. Um, she joined us for the summer and helped us run a campaign. So um, yeah, definitely reach out um, and I'd love to speak with you about opportunities as well. I just thought of a book that um, came to mind that was impactful for me starting out as an inner city missionary, and it's called Beyond Charity by John Perkins. So um, I think it would be helpful for anybody considering missions, just going beyond charity and what is God really asking us to do. And then, yeah, um, we have we have summer internships. We also have work teams who've come from Baylor, and we've had summer interns and year-long interns from Baylor. Um, so we're always interested in more. Um, but you can check out our opportunities at urbanpromisearkansas.org, and I'll put that in the chat as well. But I also just wanted to say to everybody here, just hearing from you guys and seeing you has been really encouraging. And so I think you, I think you had some great advice and insight, and God bless you all, and may we all have the people that God has for us. Amen. Yes, I appreciate uh, all of you guys spending time with us today, and I know our Baylor students uh, appreciate it as well, hearing from people in the field. So uh, hopefully we can keep up with you guys in the future. And again, we thank you for taking part in Missions Week. And uh, I wish you the best. Thank you all for hopping in with us. 
Thank you for hosting us. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks.